Good morning. Good morning to all. How wonderful to be gathering together. We do gather near and far. I'm Poppy, I'm parish priest in Beveston, Long Newton, Shipton Moyne and Tetbury. Uh, but in fact, I'm joining you from Manchester this morning. I'm spending a week in my mum's house and uh, seeing lovely family all around. Uh, so I'm one of those who's further away, but we are all gathered, all gathered before God. Come to worship, to bring God the prayers of our hearts and to seek to understand more deeply what it means to be God's people and to follow the way of Christ. I am delighted to be sharing worship this morning with Ian and welcome back Ian. You've been taking a break for a while, it's wonderful to be leading worship with you and to hand over to you now. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for your welcome, Poppy. And uh, may, may I add my welcome to everybody. It's a delight to be here to be able to join in with the worship at the sharp end. A couple of uh, housekeeping things first. Can I remind you to stay on mute, uh, except when we're sharing together? Can I remind you too to use the chat button, particularly when we come to the in prayers of intercession, so that you can uh, relay to us your thoughts and prayers, and I will voice those on behalf of us all. Uh, also remember the gallery view will enable you to see a fair number of us at once, uh, but you can go on to speak of you if you just want to see the person who's speaking. And finally, in terms of housekeeping, the sound levels will vary, so adjust the volume at your end as you need to. It is a joy to be able to greet each other as we meet for worship, because though we are scattered, we are gathered in one spirit. So we begin by unmuting ourselves to greet each other. <coughs> Hello. Good morning to all. It's lovely to share this welcome together. So today our focus is Jesus' words, I am the true vine. And he gives us a wonderful image of what it means to be a disciple of Christ, to know Christ as the source of our life, to be rooted in him, and to know that this is the only way that we can bear the fruits of love, truly bear the fruits of love in our lives, to know Jesus as the true vine. And Ian will help us a little later to reflect on all that this means, what it means to abide in Christ, as the true vine, as the true vine. And so holding all of these things before God, we begin with the words of the greeting. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. As we come together as God's family, we ask for his healing in our lives. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. 
we have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our hope in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May God, who loved the world so much that he gave his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, the light of minds that know you, the joy of hearts that love you, and the strength of wills that serve you, grant us so to know you, that we may truly love you, so to love you, that we may truly serve you, whose service is perfect freedom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we go to Richard for our first reading. Our first reading comes from the Acts of the Apostles, reading from chapter 8, verse 26. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A wonderful proclaiming the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to sing about that in our first hymn, Lord of All Hopefulness. We sing safe in the knowledge that we're all on mute and we share in words sung by St. Martin's voices. <laughs>
And now we go to Sue for our second reading. The Gospel is taken from John chapter 15. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself <laughs> unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak and may we all hear in the name of one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. At the end of this month, I shall be remembering that it is 50 years since I was ordained deacon. Such anniversaries prompt us looking back, and I have been thinking over some of the events in my life over the past half century. A sermon is no place for a set of mere anecdotes. However, the juxtaposition of this anniversary and today's gospel reading has caused me to consider where abiding in Christ has been significant for me. The lessons I have learnt may be meaningful for every one of us, not just we who are in formal ministries. In my middle twenties, I was asked to visit a lady I will call Joan. She was angry and very bitter. Her teenage son had been killed riding his motorbike. Joan had wanted his ashes buried outside the youth club he loved. Church rules dictated that the vicar was not allowed to do this. Burying ashes outside the churchyard was not allowed. She was adamant and his hands were tied. Joan was understandably angry that her son had been killed, but expressed her anger to the whole village with a focus that the vicar wouldn't bury the ashes where she wanted. I regularly visited her, but her lament never changed and her anger never abated. I have no, uh, no doubt that Christ was there in her anguish, seeking to bring Joan comfort. For me to abide in Christ meant being there to be his visible presence and his ears. Abiding in Christ means that we sometimes have to be where it is extremely uncomfortable because he is there first. It was well expressed uh, by the then Dean of Sheffield Cathedral on the day during the Falklands War when HMS Sheffield was sunk. When the Dean was asked where God was, he declared that God was at the bottom of the Atlantic crying. As we are by, we find Christ crucified there first. Twenty years on, 
and now in my middle 40s, I went through a period of great trauma. The details are unimportant for the purposes of this sermon, but I discovered something very significant about abiding in Christ. Of course, there were some lovely Christian folk who came to my assistance. What was surprising was that some of them were the people I would have least expected. I was surrounded by practical love in a period of deep darkness. Practical love may be offered by the least expected, rather like the Samaritan on the Jerusalem to Jericho road. Abiding in Christ meant, meant accepting the care of these unexpected people, are people I could have easily snubbed or even ignored. As we abide in Christ, we, were, we learn to welcome all his Samaritans. A further 20 years on, and now in my middle 60s, I was invited to conduct a piece of research for the Church of England. This required much listening, as no one was quite sure what we were looking for. Abiding in Christ meant taking seriously what I could and could not do. A sober sense of self-awareness. Abiding in Christ meant listening to the interviewees, as well as listening as best I could to Christ, so that I would not miss the difference between what was important and what was crucial. Only he could show me what I really needed to recognize. Only he could enable me to write a report so as to be understood. Abiding in Christ meant knowing my talents were far from enough and it was only his touch that would bring the right results. As we abide in Christ, his life in us brings us towards maturity and yields an abundant harvest. So looking back over 50 years reminds me that abiding in Christ has meant being there, where he is at the place of deepest human anguish. It has meant joyfully accepting those he has sent, whether I liked them or not. It has meant letting him create the harvest he desires, both in me and around me. It is from these experiences over the past 50, 50 years that I can affirm that when we abide in Christ, it allows him to minister his healing, generate his comfort, and bring in his kingdom. And the deeper our abiding, the more profound his work in us and for his world. Amen. We come now to our time of reflection.
And so we come to the time to declare our faith. And as we do this, we do through the service, you're invited to respond to the words printed in bold, which Ian will lead on everyone's behalf. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess together the faith of the church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ, the risen Christ, that wonderful invitation, peace, peace be with you, sharing peace amongst one another and then taking that peace out into the world. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And also with you. So we unmute and share the peace together. Peace be with you. Peace with you, everyone. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Alison. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Roger and Margot. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Geraldine. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. In our time of prayer, we begin in a moment with Peter offering prayers he has prepared on our behalf. And then we will open a time of prayer for all. So you're invited to share your prayers on the chat and I will have the privilege of reading those on behalf of our worshiping community. So we go to Peter to open this time of prayer. Let us pray. Risen Christ, you were wounded that the world might be healed. This morning we pray for healing in that world, remembering especially India's struggle with the COVID-19 epidemic. For medical staff, for the strength to cope under the pressure of so many cases, so few resources and surrounded by constant deaths for their politicians, for wisdom and dedication, and for other nations to share their resources. Remember those needing hospital treatment in India that isn't COVID related and the extra struggles that they face. And in the world we pray and remember the injured and the bereaved in Israel. Jesus, Lord of life, in your, mercy, in your mercy, hear us. We pray for healing in politics, especially local elections. To slightly misquote, endue thy ministers with righteousness. We pray for rediscovery and spread of a sense of probity, honour and service. For renewal and refreshment, for our leaders in the church nationally and in the diocese and across our benefice and especially for Poppy and the benefice wardens facing difficult decisions about worship in church and online. 
Jesus, Lord of life. In your mercy, hear us. We pray for our town and our surrounding villages. And especially we pray for healing for those currently suffering, especially those known to us in our family, friends, and across the benefice. For the families and friends of those recently departed and those whose lives are drawing to an end and those who care for them. We pray especially for those who dedicate their life and ministry for caring for the sick, the dying and the bereaved. And we remember especially young people whose lives are focused on caring for long-term <coughs> illness. Jesus, Lord of life. In your mercy, hear us. So we come to uh, the prayers that you are submitting to us. We pray for Diran, who is poorly, remembering his wife Liv and the whole family. We pray for Sue, who is facing surgery in the next fortnight for bowel cancer. And we pray for all the NHS staff and the volunteers who are working so hard to vaccinate the whole population. We pray for Len, who is ill at home, and that John Wood may rest in peace. For the families of Sean Scottford and Mike Sparrowhawk, that they too may rest in peace. We pray for those in nursing homes, that they may soon be able to enjoy more freedom in safety. We pray for Claire's mother, who continues constant care for her father suffering from Alzheimer's. And as we pray for them, we pray that we can learn to listen and to hear other people much better, hearing Christ through them. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We're coming towards the time when we come to the end of our worship and we go out from this place to serve our loving Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you to everyone, everyone who's joined this morning. We make this worship together in our worship, holding us in worship. Thank you to Jonathan for your wonderful arrangements um, of familiar and loved hymns. To Richard and Sue for the reading and Richard, Richard and Sue for the reading and Peter for the prayers. And Ian in his sharing of leading worship with me this morning. In a moment, we'll share in God's blessing, and then as we end the time of worship, 
we'll think, sing our final hymn of Jesus, I have promised. And then you're invited to stay for our virtual coffee time. Uh, it'll be familiar to many of you, and if you've not tried it, do give it a go. It's wonderful to just catch up with people. We have little groups for five minutes and then we swap around. Um, so do stay if you can. But first, as we begin to say, have a good week, we're going to open our mics and use that lovely form of goodbye, which is God be with you. God be with you. God be with you. God be with you. What a wonderful way of blessing one another. So we bow our heads. In that spirit, we pray for God's blessing on us all. May the love of the word made flesh enfold us. His joy fill our lives. His peace be in our hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>